Welcome and thank you for tuning in to the American Investor Show. Please click subscribe if this is your first time listening. From trader and CEO interviews to breaking news about companies you won't hear anywhere else, nobody does a better job at keeping you in the know when it comes to penny stocks. The term penny stock generally refers to a security issued by a very small company that trades at less than $5 per share. Penny stocks are extremely risky, yet they offer rates of return on investment not seen anywhere else. The host, guest, and callers are not registered financial advisors licensed by any government entity, and therefore, the following should be considered entertainment. The host, guest, and callers disclaim all liability in the event any information, commentary, analysis, opinions, advice, and or recommendations prove to be inaccurate, incomplete, or unreliable, or result in any investment losses. Before investing in penny stocks, you should consult a professional to determine what strategy may be best for your individual needs. Now, without further ado, your host, LaSalle Anungu. Yes, yes, what's going on everyone? Shout out to people in the chat room right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to talk small cap stocks. It's time to talk Bitcoin. Because unless you've been living under a rock, man, Bitcoin is on the move, okay? And you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of Bitcoin, but I am the biggest fan of making some money. <laughs> and, you know, Bitcoin stocks today did a nice little move. Nice little late move. So I'm going to be really interested to see how they move and react tomorrow to what we're seeing right now in Bitcoin. Right. So looks like uh, we're, we're, you know, kind of selling off here a little bit from those you know from those peaks from those peaks um pretty uneventful today i mean we had a little bit of a nice little run today i think i there were some guys who posted some gains on twitter i saw some guys post up some gains on twitter uh but for the most part didn't see the big moves in the stock in the bitcoin stocks that i was i was thinking i was going to see so we'll see what happens tomorrow on those I'll be watching carefully to see what happens tomorrow on those. For those of you guys who remember, uh, BTCS was one of them. Uh, BTCS. Let me see. I didn't even look at that one today. BTCS. Oh, BTCS was a nice gainer. I was looking at BTSC. BTCS. Uh, nice gain today. Nice gain today on BTCS. I'm 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 impressed. I'm impressed. Shout out to BTCS. All right. Here's the 50 moving average. Here's the 50 moving average. I believe they're, oh, they're above the 20. Uh, above the 21 anyway. But looking for that 50 moving average so we know that, hey, this is real. You see, it hasn't been above the 50 moving average uh, since January of 2018. And we're right below it right now. Uh, 50 moving average is at 8 cents, 0.0826. So I'm looking to see whether or not Bitcoin, the coin itself, holds those gains. It looks like we're struggling a little bit. What's going on, Andrew? Shout out to everybody in the chat room right now. Ricardo, bad scientist in the building. First, Corey Kwan, Cali Rob. Somebody saying it was a short squeeze? Possibly. What's going on, Juan de Casa, Lamont? Ghetto Stock Trader, JT the Bullhead Trader, he was second in. Jeff Demi Marine, Artie Buckley, Gerardo, what's up? David K, what's up, man? Terry Cherry, Legendary HDPG, George M. Shout out to all the people. Gold Hill Trader, what's going on? Donnie the, the Car Doctor, Harris. Appreciate all of you joining me and those watching me in the future. All right? So, BTCS on watch. And, you know, they say it was a, a, a short squeeze. But look, there was some recent news about Bank of America. Bank of America came out and they got a patent on some kind of, of crypto technology. I'm, I'm not getting a real clear idea of what exactly the patent has anything to, you know, exactly do. In fact, if I let me see if I can find that article. I know some of you Bitcoin people would know it, 
better than me. And by the way, if you if you know what exactly the underlying technology that they went to get the blockchain based data storage system. So they haven't gotten it yet. They applied for the patent. They applied for the patent. Let me see. Let me look it up here. One second. Let me. Uh, Bank of America seeks patent on blockchain based data storage system. Published a Bank of America, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, published a Bank of America's application for a patent. All right. On a blockchain based storage system with automated data authentication. Now, the original document shows that it was filed in October of 2016. This is interesting. That, that it's coming to light now. Why, why, why would the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office publish it now? Why would they make this public now? Why wouldn't Bank of America had made it public at that time? Earlier this month, the Bank of England partnered with blockchain startup group called Chain and released a proof of concept paper which investigates how to configure a ledger system to maintain privacy between participants. All right. So we're seeing a lot of these financial institutions come and, and, and take advantage of these low crypto prices. And I have no doubt that 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 they're accumulating. They're accumulating large positions in some of these cryptocurrencies. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I've always said it, you know, that that they're going to be there's going to be a second crypto run. There's going to be a second crypto run. And the next run is going to be, you know, controlled by the institutions. This first run, the institutions were caught flat footed, man. They just got blown away. You saw some of the crypto some of the leaders of these large institutions come out and try to 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 take it down try to demystify it right and and they had to eat their words over the you know couple months over the couple months going into december but this next run is going to be led by the institutions you're going to have institutions that are going to come out and say hey you need to Put your money in cryptocurrencies. It's safe. We're behind it now. You trust us because you know us. You bank with us. You've grown up with us. Put your money in cryptocurrency. That's going to be the second round. That's going to be the second round. I just can't tell if Bitcoin is going to be there for that round. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, somebody's saying, what is Hashgraph? Hashgraph isn't going anywhere. Hashgraph is, is, is public, is privately owned in order to use the platform. Although, yes, it's incredibly fast. You've got to pay the owner, right? You've got to pay the guy who created it. And uh, it, it, it's, it's not open source. It's, it's not going anywhere. It's not an open source platform. Powerful system, but it's just not going anywhere. I'm not a believer in Hashgraph at all. And the guy the guy who owns it, he, he's, he's a big-time asshole, too. Uh, see, they probably have a leg in it. Oh, absolutely, Legendary 8s. All right, so let's get to uh, the markets now. Let's get to the markets now. And, and, you know, beautiful day today, right? I mean, you guys enjoyed the day? QQQ, SPY, beautiful green day across the board today. I, I know many of you enjoyed it if you're... A trader who you know likes to go long. You had a great opportunity to get some really nice highs uh, today, right from the gate. Um, you know that sell off at the end of the day is always concerning, always concerning. But you know, look, you you, you had some opportunities again from the gate. Uh, you know to buy some end of money calls, or if you were holding an end of money call from yesterday, or even three or four days ago. Uh, you know starting from last Friday especially, uh, then, then you had, you know, a really good day. You've had a really good week. You've had a really good week if you stocked up some, some calls uh, from, you know, the last couple days ago. There had been terrifying days, though. I, I'd give you that. It's been tough 
to be a bull over the last couple days, but hey, you had some people out there who had the guts to do it. 919, you're on the air. What's going on? Hey, Sal. How's it going? Whoa, what's going on, Bats? How are you? Oh, very good. <clears throat> very good, sir. Um, spy, spy, spy. Mm -hmm. What an incredible day. I was tweeting until my my head exploded. This thing gave us 12 opportunities or close to that. If if you were shorting spy today or buying puts, you had at least five or six opportunities on the five minute chart. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it was just beautiful. I mean, there was a point where I just said like. I lost track of how many double tops were created after about four. And then I, when the fifth one came, I was like, you know, I think, because I, I, I called every single top mm -hmm. exactly well before it happened. If anyone was following my tweets, this was easy money. I would even say, like I tweeted, this was free money because... Um, it, it, the moment it, the moment it opened, it hit, um, I think was it, hold on for a sec. Um, it, it hit 266.50 mm -hmm. and it did that after about the first, the first 20 minutes, but I typically wait for the first hour. I don't like to do anything after that. Mm -hmm. So after at about... Let me see. Let me convert it to Eastern time. Um, 9.50. So about 20 minutes after the market opened, it hit the first top. And I called that top because I started seeing, you know, um, huge upper um, upper wicks. I said, now's the time to get in at 266.50 if you're, if you're doing puts. It sold off. Then it reversed for the second time, went up again. Um, you know, you, you saw the, the long wicks. It, it touched uh, 266.50 again, sold off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it goes for the triple top, and this time it broke out of um, 266.50. It went to about just over, you know, like, I think it was like, 266.80 sold off. Yeah, it came. It came back for the quadruple top, and I was like, "This is this is ridiculous." Like, I felt like I was figure skating or watching figure skating when they do the axle jumps and the triple and the quadruple. After after it sold out, um, sold off after the the quadruple top. It then, yeah, it then sells off, and then I think it went for a fifth one. I know there were four clear ones. I would say maybe like five and a half. So I was like, if no one made money off of this because you had five or six opportunities on the put side or shorting it, and then you had an equal number of calls or going long that you could have done with the quadruple bottom, or the pentuple bottom, uh, I, I lost count. So I was like, because today I wasn't going to trade. Um, I'd already done three trades, and I'm starting with a small account. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm not going to trade for the fourth time. Let me just see what happens. But every top I called it, um, it, it I mean, if, if you look back at my tweets, I called every single top, and, and it did exactly what I, what I said it would do. Okay, so then I also tweeted, watch out, because um, it could go to 267. Guess what? It, it went exactly to 267. And I said, listen, this thing's going to sell off, wait for sell off, end of the day. So I'm like, I need to get into this. And then I, I actually put in for a swing trade. So I took an at the money 267. I think I bought uh, six puts. At the money at 267. You look at it right now, it's dropped two whole dollars. And I'm like, um, my thesis was like, oh, tomorrow's Friday the 13th. Friday yep. could bring some bad news. So I just went in. Uh, I, I must say, like, I don't know for sure whether tomorrow will be, you know, a bearish day. 
but I'm already close to two dollars down. I think last I calculated, I was thirty or forty percent up after hours, and I'm, I mean this is ridiculous. Like, um, and then I also tweeted like out of all the four days so far that I started trading the spy, this was the easiest day in all of them because you had literally five opportunities to the downside, five opportunities to the um, to the upside where you could have gotten in and made so much money on this. So this was this was just you know <laughs> this was just easy for me because it, it, uh, the patterns were just I mean talk about five perfect setups and yeah we'll see what happens. Um, I hope tomorrow doesn't. It doesn't start going up into tomorrow, but I mean, I'm I'm looking at like I'm so far up anyway that I think I'll make good money tomorrow. But if it goes down further, I mean, we could be looking at like a fifty, sixty, seventy percent gain on my overnight swing trade. So yeah, that's all I had. I mean, this this whole week has been good for me so far. I've made um, three. Um, um, day trades, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today I decided let me mix it up. So I bought right at the top, perfectly timed. It sold off, you can see, in the last 15 minutes. And now is like down, like I said, $2 after hours. Um, and yeah, um, so we'll see how my swing trades go. But so far, I think I'm going to come up on top. Um, with this overnight um, hold, if it goes down further, I make more money. But this was a glorious day, and yeah, I've been having so much success just trading the spy. There it is. I thank you so much, Bats. Again, congrats to you, bro. Appreciate the call. Thank you, Sal. Take care. Bye -bye. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Bat Scientists. Appreciate the call, Bats. And uh, you know, good job doing what you're doing. Uh, you had some resistance today on that 100 moving average, basically on the SPY, if you're looking at the industrials. Uh, 100 moving average showing a bit, you know, a bit of resistance here. Uh, it, it, it's a very telling point, and we need to crack above that. We got above it today, but as you see, we pulled back and we didn't commit above that 100 moving average. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. So far, uh, last I checked, uh, before the shows, we were a bit sideways. Uh, on the futures, but we'll keep looking. Uh, right now, I got Ken on the line. Ken, what's going on? <laughs> so, uh, what's up, Sal? The Renova R and VA. You're yeah. in it with me. That it. You see that volume in the last thirty minutes? It did thirty million volume in the last thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, Ken. I, 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 I You know what? I, I'm actually have to almost apologize to my my viewers because you know when we talk about R and VA. Uh, I wrote that article on my website, Advanced Equity Research, uh, on RNVA. I wrote that back on December 20th. And, you know, in December 20th, when we look at RNVA, you know, it was it was trading at, one, a much higher price. But more importantly, uh, I knew that there was still significant amount of bearish, you know, potential to, to still happen. So I, I kind of didn't you know, bring it to people's attention because I kind of knew it was going to eventually uh, continue to sell off. But uh, now things are turning around. Now I'm seeing several other OTC stocks that are very cheap. Uh, that could really be, you know, something that, again, if you've got a decently uh, managed portfolio that you can put some money in into the side, and I think you're going to be, be really pleased. Uh, it's time to talk about OTC stocks again. And RNVA, man, has been really impressing me, and it's really been now one of the biggest gainers in my, uh, you know, in my account personally because RNVA has just it's been a monster over the last couple of weeks. You, yeah, last Wednesday it was at a penny. You realize that? Yes. Now we're at almost three cents. God. Um, here's a question though. Someone posted on I have tonight something about that. People have voted. They got emails on the proxy, and if you don't vote, then that's a, that's like a vote for the reverse split. And I think the reverse split, it, whether it's going to be accepted or not, is next uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday, the seventeenth or eighteenth. Mm -hmm. Just the ten K is going to be released in the next day or two. So I mean, there's there is some risk. Yes, there's but, absolutely uh, some there, risk, <laughs> and that's why on Monday, Ken, 
I'm taking my money out because I don't know what's going to happen. So, mm, right. Uh, I, I I'm agree. taking my money out. <laughs> I, 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 you know, on the run today, I wasn't going to sell. I want to see what happens on Monday. I don't mind if, 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 uh, you know, we open uh, tomorrow down a little bit. I mean, I think if we, if we, if we're talking, you know, more than 7%, then I'm going to, I'm probably going to sell, but I, I, I doubt that. Uh, Me too. I think we but, break three. Uh, I, I'm looking to, 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 to get out Monday and then see what happens uh, moving forward. Uh, but, you know, again, this has been a stock that we've been talking about here on the show for quite a while. And it's just, you know, awesome to see when things work out. Uh, RNVA, former, again, NASDAQ stock that uh, the CEO just took control and said, hey, look, you know, we're going to be making some investments that are going to take some time to create shareholder value. The company invested so aggressively, they got themselves delisted. And now, you know, the, the, those investments are finally you know, hitting uh, profitability, and, and it's showing uh, as traders run back into the stock. So, uh, you know, good for them, good for them. Yeah, very, very exciting. And, of course, my F the FUSD, Rory, there was a surprise uh, radio show today uh, with that CEO radio where they spoke with uh, the CEO, Rory, for about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Um, the stock was up about eight cents, so it's good because we remember we hit a low of dollar thirty eight intraday yesterday, close at one sixty nine. Um, I think the next two weeks will be very exciting. I, I really think the stock's going at three dollars between now and the week of the twenty third. I, I just do. So I, 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 I wouldn't put it against them too. I'm, I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, in 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 RNVA, you know, uh, there's a book that I hand out here for guys who emailed me. And it was about Steve Burns and his moving averages. And one of the moving averages that he has uh, that he considers a pullback support uh, EMA is that 21-day EMA. And that 21-day yes, EMA on Fuzz was literally perfect. I mean, it was perfection <laughs> Amazing. on FUSZ. And to see it sit on that line for about two or three days and then bounce off of it, that was your entry right there. And... It, I, yep. I look back on it, and, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. I should have did it, should have not. But still, I mean, I should have had that moving average out there because I would have been able to see that. And FUSZ, uh, you know, has been a winner since then. Now, if we get a red day tomorrow, which I don't, I don't know. We had a really good day today. I think we continue to go higher. Uh, but $3 is not out of the question, especially after we've seen stocks like R-Care and, and many of those other ones that – went uh, you know to, to pluto basically when they were uh hot so i'm not surprised to see what uh fuse has in store our car was another stock that uh going back in the charts i saw hit the 21 day moving average and then come back higher and then explode so uh, uh fuse i won't put them uh, you know put that against them because that's another stock that you know i i, I should have did a little bit more research on because i greatly underestimated the demand that FUSZ has. I mean, they are boards upon boards upon boards that are talking about this stock. It reminds me a lot about Pred when we first started that run. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pred, that was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and finally, I um, wanted to mention to you, uh, what's the other one? It was an, that NBCN. I didn't. I, I haven't played it. Nancy Victor, Charlie Nancy. After hours yesterday, yesterday it shot up to like eight cents, and then yeah, today it came down. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was a down. dud. It, it was a dud. I saw yeah, that, yeah. and and that was one of those things that I, you know when I didn't do the show last night, I was like, God damn, man, we got a nice runner to start the morning because uh, I saw that after hours yesterday as well. But then nothing happened. So. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, you know, it just was like, okay, we would have got all excited for nothing. Uh, right. And, and, you know, that happens. And that's that's nobody's fault to blame. The market is, at the end of the day, uh, you know, is going to keep it honest. For example, we had, what was that, VHC or something like that? We were really excited about that stock, right? VHC. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they, they did that whole thing with... Um, Apple winning that suit, it, it was the best short of probably the day. I mean, you want to talk about right, right a, 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 a stock you could actually, you know, short, VHC was that stock. So, you know, here we right. are now, VHC back on its 21 day. We actually touched it before closing at 415. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it just happens like that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, one more thing. I, I, I tweeted you in bats this afternoon about, I was like looking at BTSC and BTCS. 
the, those charts are looking interesting. They're, they're looking somewhat bullish. I mean, I don't, I really don't like Bitcoin, but you know, the charts. Hmm, what do you think? Yeah, same thing. Uh, I, 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 we we talked about it. You know, just to start the show. I'm not the biggest fan of Bitcoin, but I am the biggest fan about making money. And right now, these Bitcoin charts look very, very interesting. But I wanna, I want more information that this this rally is going to be around for more than a day. You know, Bitcoin trades 24/7. It doesn't take a day off. It doesn't take a night off. So if I'm going to hold this into the weekend, right, the commodity is still trading. I want to yeah. I don't want to come back on Monday when the market opens and Bitcoin is back to sixty eight hundred. You know what I mean? So uh, right. you got to day trade know, it, I guess. or fifty nine, whatever that low was. And I, I don't want that to happen to me. So I'm looking for news to justify an entry that's going to keep me sane over the weekend and know that I can come back to a Bitcoin that's trading where it is now or even just, you know, 5% up or down from where it is now. I'll be happy with that. But right now, it, you know, it's it's made such a big move so soon, I'm afraid it might not last. So I'm looking for news to justify yeah. it. It's all about the risk, which yes. I always have to remember. It's easy to get, you know, you got to control, but control emotions, the risk, the risk. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Sal. Take appreciate care. it, Ken. Thank you so much for the call. I uh, appreciate you. Thank you so much for the call. And again, I got a, a ticker on some of the best uh, Bitcoin stocks out there uh, on my website, advancedequityresearch.com. I uh, saw the move today, Riot Blockchain. I didn't see Elfin. Elfin. There you go. Elfin. Um, Riot Blockchain, BTSC. All, all the Bitcoin movers were, were you know, the, the movers that were hot when it all jumped off were hot today. They were hot today. You know, so here we have Elfin looking for that 21 uh, to break out above that. I know you're above the 10 on it by far, right? I'm sure. There it is. You cracked just above that 10. And that 10 is what he describes as a short-term trend. So it could be the beginning of a short-term trend in uh, Elfin or, you know, some of these other Bitcoin stocks. But we're not sure yet. We're not sure yet. So, again, uh, I'm watching tonight, and it's going to be interesting to see when we wake up tomorrow or in the next couple hours, uh, will Bitcoin still be at some of these highs? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. He said Elfin is halted. Elfin is halted. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Damn shit. Y'all got me on that one. Y'all got me on that one. Cause I was like, I know I didn't see it today on the board. So I'm like, what the fuck? All right. Y'all got me on that one. But Riot Blockchain was on the board. There it is. Riot Blockchain was on the board. Hold on. Let me let me check this uh halt on Elfin. How long is this for, bro? Oh shit. Yeah, it is a T12 halt. You know what the last T12 halt that we've talked about here was? It was that ticker called Wins. Do you guys remember Wins? There were guys in Wins. They were halted in Wins for damn near six months, bro. That was I was almost six months that guys had to wait to get their money out of Wins. You guys, you guys remember that, right? I know some of you in here remember that that move in Wins that was unstoppable for days. That was unstoppable for days, dude. Wins was at least, that was, at, was that at least, it felt like six months. Let me see here. It felt like six months. Because here was that move in wins. You guys remember it was just that stock that was like 45, 60, 65, 70, 70 for 210, 220, 225. It just wouldn't stop. It just wouldn't stop. Now nobody would touch it with a nine-foot pole. Uh, GBTC, GBTC, you guys know that's the Bitcoin Investment Trust. Uh, that This was another stock that when that first came out, it, you know, before this Ford split, you know, it was a pretty expensive stock, right? It was a pretty extensive stock that we saw, you know, go from the low 200s to some of the high 700s. So you had guys who made money in GBTC as well. That Ford split, got it a lot cheaper, brought, you know, some interesting liquidity into the stock. Now it trades at four, 4.3, 4.5 million. And here's the thing. This is a stock that, 
you know, when it was trading at three digits, you know, it barely brought in 20, 25,000 a day. So uh, very interesting uh, GPTC. Now that Bitcoin is a lot cheaper, we start to get that that move back to the upside. Do we see start seeing GPTC start uh, showing that kind of a velocity that we saw uh, back when it traded at, you know, 200, 300 dollars? That's going to be interesting to see, too. All right. That's going to be interesting to see, too. Uh, DJACF Canadian weed stock. Yeah, a lot of some of these weed stocks are, are making moves again, man. Uh, you know, we saw can can move today. It's been moving last couple days. I saw that move yesterday on can. I saw it today on can. Uh, I wrote up an article on can. I called it a piece of shit. It's still a piece of shit. But look, money is money and make it where you can. And Bitcoin is where the money is at right now. And marijuana when we talk about some of these OTC stocks. So uh, C-A-N-N, the, you know, fundamentals have gotten worse since I wrote my article on CAN. But, you know, looks like traders could care less. 21% gain uh, today on C-A-N-N. So, uh, hey, look, cash is cash, man. 21% gain on your money in one day. I, You know, you, you, you can't shit on that. You can't shit on that. All right? So... Shout out to Marijuana, making a little bit of a move here. Also saw one of my old favorites, CVSI, nice 7% gain today too. But again, some of the stocks that I know I've got my legs in, MCOA, I'm looking forward to seeing that move. Um, also looking at hemp. Hemp is another popular one. Not, not, well, That's not the right hemp. Let me see, that's the OTC hemp. There it is, OTC hemp. That's another one that I'm paying attention to. So some of these stocks that have very little downside risk, but I know personally a lot of huge upside potential, uh, you know, they haven't moved just yet. So uh, I'd, I'd love to see some action here, right? So the traders who are looking for value, if you're looking for some of this value and you don't want to be holding a bag, look at some of these other marijuana stocks that haven't caught on to the rush yet. That I haven't caught on to the rush yet. Thank you for bringing up USEI. I've got that in the in the description for the show. USEI is back at uh, in the triples, right? Now, again, if you remember, USEI is kind of one of those ones you're going to have to be patient with. There are a lot of guys who unfortunately weren't patient and end up selling too early and, and getting out. But the guys who were patient enough with me to sit in USEI, we made over 600% on our money. We made over 600% on our money. So... Uh, USEI was a nice move uh, that you just had to be a little bit patient about. I made my 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 videos. I, I've seen I, I I know the CEO and I just know what he's going to do. And when you just got to get at those lows and be patient. And when he needs money again, he's going to run a promo and it's going to go soar up. And that's where you can dump it for your gains. All right, nice MJ play. All right, let's keep it going. PLSE. Pulse, Pulse, what's that, PLSE News, PLSE News, you're going to have to let me know about this company, I'm not familiar with PLSE, not the cheapest stock in the world, 18 1818 right now, not the cheapest stock in the world, not familiar with the company, so let me know, PLSE, what's going on there, I do see here, After Hours News, $25 a share. I see an order at at $755 for $25 on, on the bid. Uh whoa, that's a nice move here. You're talking about a seven dollars right now after hours uh on PLSE. Let's see if it holds in pre-market. You know, pre-market seven to nine thirty is a long time. So you gotta see if that's going to hold. We'll see if that's going to hold tomorrow, but uh, insane. That's a monster kill for us. Monster kill, 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 kill. I'll, kill, give, him kill, that. I'll kill. give him that. I was really excited about gold yesterday, and gold gave it all back today. I was pretty disappointed in that. Uh, those of you guys who have been looking at gold prices, we had, I kind of got excited about possibility that, you know, the sleepy commodity could be alive again, and uh, we saw gold pretty much give it all back. Pretty much give it all back. Here's here's 
that that breakout yesterday, which was very strong, man, it was a very strong move in gold. Uh, and then we saw gold give it all back after hours, literally give it all back out after hours. And now back, uh, you know, in my wedge here. And, you know, now we're 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 basically back where we were, uh, you know, at the beginning of the week, basically back where we were at the beginning of the week and nowhere near get back to my weekly so you can see it better. Uh, that that, you know, multi year breakout on GLD, which is that one thirty one eighty. All right. So uh, that's where I want to play gold. I'm not I'm not I don't have the patience, uh, you know, to, to sit on some some slow moving calls right now on it. Uh, but hey, at that breakout, I'd love to, to, to join in on a run. All right. What's going on, Monk Man? Mine, yeah, mine. Oh, are you talking about mine? The, the uh, what's that? What were those guys called? The Wolfpack trade. Here's the thing about mine, though, man. You know, it, the dilution is too painful. The dilution is far too painful. Uh, if Daryl Graham, if you're talking about mine, uh, Monerico, the guys with the drinks and whatnot. Uh, this was the company that was being pumped up huge by what's that? The Wolf of Weed Street. You remember him? Wolf of Weed Street. I'm I'm not a fan of of the the float on this one. I think it's it, it's incredibly big. It's incredibly big, and uh, I'm I'm just not a fan of, of of mine right now. I think you got some better plays. Speaking of uh, some marijuana plays, this that move in in, in uh, MCIG. Here it is. MCIG is on the move. It's a stock that I looked at this uh, today as well. MCIG, nice move on that one. So. We're starting to see some stocks really bounce and, and, and make some really interesting moves here. Uh, where are we at on the 50 on that one? So above the 50 moving average, MCIG. Uh, but then again, you know, be careful. Again, you don't want to buy them this high. You really want to buy when, you know, the risk is low. When the risk is low. That's why I've, I've already put up that MCOA, though, hemp. And again, do some of your own research in DD and get some of these, you know, MJ plays that haven't moved yet. That haven't moved yet. We're going into the summer. Uh, we're going to start seeing MJ news uh, coming out of states like New York, New Jersey. Uh, you know, we're going to get some really exciting news out of the Northeast uh, revolving, involving, excuse me, uh, marijuana. All right. You said let's hit buds. Let's not hit buds because I'm holding a short on buds. So let's <laughs> let's not hit buds. Uh you know, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see on buds. I, I am holding a short on buds, and uh, you know, it's, I've been in and out of this stock for quite a while, man. I wrote an article on buds. I don't even remember when I wrote the article on my website, but uh, it's one of those few OTC stocks that is incredibly liquid. But uh, anyway, for shorts, anyway, to to be able to borrow shares from. Uh, anyway, it was. It was, but. Uh, let me see, buds. B B U D Z. When did I write that one? And I've been in and out in buds so so much. Yeah, back in January, January of 2010, I wrote that article on buds. Yep, yeah, about right here. I wrote that on January 10th. So I wrote it this. I wrote it on January 10th, which was at the top. And I wrote that article on buds, and I held a beautiful short, and uh, it it paid big time. Paid big time. So I'm kind of back in it now on a on a bit of a greedy tip uh, off their last couple of days of running on some promo. So interesting to see on that one. Uh, DPW, DPW is another Bitcoin stock. I saw, shout out to the guys on Black Box Stocks, man. You got the alert on on uh, on DPW at, I want to say nine, what was that, like nine, it was like literally at the bell. Let me uh, see here. Uh, I believe it was at the bell on DPW. You got the alert at 90 cents. You got a pre, oh yeah, pre-market. You actually got a pre-market. You got a pre-market. All right, let me give you the breakdown on that. It's actually, it actually held pretty nice into the close too. Let's go uh, to the five minute, oh, get back to this, get back to the five minute chart on DPW. Here was the day on DPW. And uh, boy, what a move on DPW. And I can show you guys that again. Shout out to and choose my link if you're going to 
join us over there in that chat room at Black Box Stocks and DPW. Uh, if I can show you that breakdown here, that was beautiful move. Here's the alert right here. Literally pre-market, 8.50 a.m. You got the alert uh, on blackboxtrader.org. And sure enough, you were able to ride it up with a decent moving average. Any positive moving on average would have kept you in that trade. Uh, you guys know my favorite with something like this is possibly the 10. It's a really good moving average to hold. As you can see, well above the 20 could have been even a better one to keep you into the trade. As that's uh, called a pullback support moving average. But uh, nice trade. Nice trade. Again, you know, up because Bitcoin was up. If you guys remember, DPW had gotten on everybody's radar because they announced that they had, uh, what was that like? They had like a little device that helped guys mine uh, cryptocurrencies. I know somebody in here can, can give me the info uh, better on that, but they had a device that they came out with. And they basically said, hey, it's going to help you mine cryptocurrencies better. And the stock went from, you know, under a buck to as high as, boy, what was that high? Six? 597. 595 to be exact. 595. So from 49 cents to $5.95. Do your do the math on that. That was an incredible run. Uh, again, when Bitcoin was doing its thing, right? So it, it literally, uh, you know, rose and fell uh, with the hype of Bitcoin dpw but look at what it did today look what it did today and 44 percent gain 44 <laughs> percent gain in one day and i'm not sure that this could be done especially if bitcoin continues to maintain its levels i'm i'm watching it like crazy man so this is supreme supreme victory, victory. you know big move on this one this is a it, it, it's it's incredibly volatile stock and it doesn't have too big of a float either it doesn't have too big of a float either so going back to crypto real quick uh we're pulling back a little bit right now i'm looking at the five minute and you know i, I want to see us hold some of these you know moving averages i want to see us hold some of these moving averages here's the the five minute the 21 and five minutes a little bit i understand because guys don't oh well you know it's crypto it's different it's different okay so we'll, we'll use a higher time frame but still, I want to see, you know, I want to see crypto hold. It's got to hold these these averages. All right. Let's go to an hourly. This is what we look like right now on the hourly. And, you know, these aren't the candlesticks you want to be seeing. Right. So we 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 got the spinning top here or some people can call that a, a fat body doji. I don't you know, it depends on what you want to go after. But what we're seeing is is a decline or a rejection of uh, those those highs of those highs based on these candlesticks so we're we're fighting we're fighting to hold here on the hourly uh that 10 moving average which again as i pointed to you is that short-term uh trend indicator but uh we'll, we'll keep watching all right we'll keep watching overall it was a nice move uh here the daily chart this is a beautiful move man beautiful beautiful move and man, it looks like even MACD probably MACD cross that MACD cross when was that that was back uh, April 8th interesting MACD cross there all right interesting call speaking of somebody who's been trading cryptocurrencies Mr. Lloyd you're on the air what's up what's, man what's up man I'm I'm right now yeah I'm, I'm riding that pullback okay um so uh I mean I think it's gonna be short term man but it's uh you know, everything needs to come back a little bit, so I'm just riding the wave down a little bit. Okay. But you know, I got some, I got some food for thought for you, man. And I was just thinking about this. And tell me what you think. So, because and we were talking about how cryptocurrency is a big scam and everything. And as far as, I mean, I mean, yeah, it, it is. But here's the question I have for you: What is the difference between OTC and and Bitcoin? I feel like the OTC market was the original Bitcoin yes. that they allowed to, for us to play. Mm -hmm. Now that this new Bitcoin came through, I mean, it, it, to me, it's just like OTC. Yeah. So what, what do you think the difference is between the two? Well, the only difference is that Bitcoin is 24 hours. That, that's all. Uh, you know, right. at, at the end of the day, you know, Bitcoin's 24 hours, 20, you know, seven days a week. No holidays off. No, you know what I mean? But 
at the end of the day, uh, you know, they're both, you know, filled with, uh, well, that one's cryptocurrencies, the OTC is companies that, that, you know, you can't use uh, general ways to evaluate, you know, to, 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 to come up with a valuation. Uh, you you kind of have to be unfortunately vague with, with potential because you really don't know uh, what the be-all, end-all right. is going to be. We understand right. and we're very clear on the fact that many of these companies won't make it and many crypto traders know that many of these cryptocurrencies won't make it. So they've got, yes, right. incredible amount of similarities. Um, you know, some may say liquidity, uh, you know, could also, you know, be they, they could very similar liquidity where the popular names are always the ones that are pretty liquid and the ones that are kind of high and buy. Uh, they kind of come with with, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, pump and dump kind of action. We still get the pump right. and dumps right there. You get pump and dumps on both sides of that. So they're very, very similar. A lot of similarities. Oh. And in fact, well, a lot of guys who trade right. OTCs. They were also trading uh, crypto as well, right? Well, and, and and here's the thing, man, that that, that irritates me. Here, the the big the big money people is upset, you know, that people are going to Bitcoin, but how come they're not going after the OTC market? It's been there for years. I mean, we we've seen, I mean, on the show itself, we've seen people have a million dollar business and it's ran out of a damn gas station. Yeah. yeah. So so why aren't they going after that? Because they're upset that they have no control over it. And so now we're all putting our money into Bitcoin. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just my, my conspiracy well, theory on it. But I'm, the thing, because to buy OTC stocks, you still got to use E-Trade, TD, and many of the other large <laughs> brokerage, uh, you know, brokerage services. So at the end right. of the day, you still have to go to Main Street Capital to trade OTCs. And it, you know, yeah. as long as they're getting a piece of the pie, they don't matter. With cryptocurrencies, particularly that first run, what we had, what well, actually some people may call it the third or fourth run, uh, but what happened in 2017, Main Street Capital did not get a piece of the pie. They did not get a piece of the pie. That why that is why they were incredibly bearish and they went out of their way to shit <laughs> on cryptocurrencies. They they went out of their way to shit on it. Right. So again, right. this next go around, they're going to be part of it. They're gonna they're gonna have their exchanges. You're gonna see these cryptocurrencies trade on some of these these mainstream you know brokerage services, and they're going to make right. it safe enough or convince you that it's safe enough to put your money in it. So they're going to be a part next time of that huge rally that we're gonna see in cryptocurrencies. Well, it's not like you got a different art about cryptocurrency now. I mean, are you are you back open to to, to trading it, I, or I, I'm I mean, not I, open to making money, bro? I'm 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 never, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of them, right? I, I, you know, right. But but look, if E Trade, if E Trade starts letting me buy Monero, they start letting me buy Ripple, they start letting me buy some of these cryptos, bro. I'm I'm down. Mm -hmm. I'm down. You know, I'm definitely down. And and you know, but when I have to go through uh you know bitnex or some some broker out of korea i don't i, I hate that shit you know what i mean right. and all the websites are janky they're funny you know <laughs> it, it's all fucked up it's goofy i've been waiting right. there's a there's a, a crypto broker bro i've been waiting for damn near seven months to get my account approved i don't even i can't even remember what the name of them is so once we start seeing uh some of these main street brokers like we having robin hood coming into it so that's going to be good to see. Coinbase was the you know the first out. They're still out there, uh, but yeah, man, that's that's going to be you know good for uh, you know cryptocurrencies once we start seeing legitimate what we believe is legitimate capital uh, finally right. underlying the business. Hey, and let me and I guess um, my 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 last question for you is is how often do you experience euphoria when you when you trade? And what I mean by that is is the Let's say you got six hundred dollars yeah. from a trade, and then I mean I'm pretty sure we all have the same thoughts. Let me go find another trade and get my ass up in there because I am feeling pretty good. Yeah. How often do you do you get euphoria? Uh, I still do, man. I still get really excited when I, especially if I get in a trade and it starts going my way immediately. I, I still get very excited, man, and and I still also sometimes get into a habit where yeah, I take some profit. And I'm feeling good about myself, and that should probably be the end of my day. And then I go to a, a I put it, you know, some of that profit into another stock, and now I'm down 
four or five percent, right? So, and I'm and I'm selling, you know, uh, like a newbie, and saying to myself, okay, let me just stop it, right? So, uh, I, right. I, I still do that as well. But a- absolutely, man, I still get really excited uh, when when I, I knock it out the park, right? Especially if we're talking about, you know, experiencing something like uh, when when an OTC stock is is you know, falling apart, right? Or, or you know, I catch a pump at the perfect time. Absolutely, man. Right. I still, I still go through that. Absolutely. But do you do you find yourself over trading once you get that 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 feeling that in, invincible? I guess being invincible, like you're untouchable. Yes. I mean, do you find yes. yourself? Oh, okay. absolutely, man. When we were, you know, when we had first started uh, started getting into calls, right? When I first started getting into buying <laughs> options. And Connor was right. calling up, and he was making sixteen, twenty thousand a day, and 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 you know I would follow him into a trade, and I would make sixteen hundred on it, and then I would go into another trade by myself, and then lose one hundred and fifty in like two seconds. So, uh, right, yeah, yeah, I, I was still doing that, but you know now I don't, I don't, I don't do that. When I make my money, I, I make sure that I get out because uh, typically, look, if you're going into a stock that you haven't researched. Uh, that day or prior to that moment, uh, you're probably going to yeah. lose money. You're probably going to lose money. But we still all do it. We still all do it. We still all see something that we believe that that is an inefficiency that we can take advantage of. Uh, but sometimes we just got to learn the hard way. And, and I see Desert uh, Edge saying, don't overtrade. Let me tell you, man, it is so hard. And I mean, I think that's, I mean, that's the part that I'm working on right now is the psychology of the market because it's so hard to walk away from when you have, and you know, for, for example, that, that INMV, I can't tell you how many times I've been up five grand or three grand and that your four kicks in and you just watch it all go away. I mean, so, so, you know, working on, on the market psychology is, is, is very, very difficult. And you, and people can say, Oh, don't overtrade, but shit, let you be up three grand. It's like, you don't see shit. You don't hear nothing. And, Basically, you're watching your money dwindle down because you're just so excited. I, I, that's just for me. But some people have a discipline to take that, that money and run. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they do it, but that's that's something I'm working on. But anyways, man, that's all I wanted to say. And it looks like somebody's talking about this ACBFF. That's that's an old treasure hunting play, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's an old uh, ACBFF. That's an old play. That's an old play. And... Uh... But but you know, look, it, it did a decent day today. I mean, uh, I'd love to see a little bit more support than that. But yeah, that's 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 a play that's out there. Absolutely. Right, right. Oh, thing. Cool, man. Well, uh, I've been in, I've been hiding in the cut, man. Just unfortunately, you know, the I've been just keep my eye on this market here. So I'm still here, brother. But uh, thank you for uh, all the entertainment and stuff, man. And uh, I hope you have a good one, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. All right, Lloyd. Thanks. All right, bye. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Mr. Lloyd. And god damn, what's this thing on my goddamn screen? I don't know if you guys can hear that that sound, but what the fuck? Hold on guys. I opened this text box and it's not letting me exit out of it. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I opened this little text box here, but you guys still see me, right? Yeah, this little title text thing on the goddamn screen, and it won't fucking go away. What the fuck? Yeah, it's like fucking... Hold on, no. Control-Alt-Delete is going to delete the whole fucking program. Fuck! Ah oh, man. And look at me, I got a lot of white people in the room. Shit. Y'all know how, I, how much I hate being embarrassed a bunch of in front of white folks. Uh God damn it, bro. It's not it's like it's just a black screen. It's just a fucking black screen, bro. I can't do anything. Mr. Lloyd, what's up, man? You're back on the air. Hey, one, hit that Windows key and then the left arrow. If you got, how many screens do you have? Uh, I, I got a. Hold on, the Windows key. And, and then hit the left button, the left to try to bring it over. No, no. 
No, it's not doing nothing. God damn. Fuck. <laughs> man, this is fucking bullshit. Hold on, man. Let me, let me. Ah, this is why I fucking hate technology sometimes, dude. Why, why? Hey, wait till we get old, man. I thought I was. Remember back in the day how good we used to be with the computers? Yeah, and yeah. you know, you, we we look at the older people. Oh, baby, you're so good at these computers oh, and yeah, everything. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be us, man. I feel that way. I'm getting there. Like, like shit. I turned on uh, the TV the other day. I'm like, what the fuck is this button here? I mean, right. I can't even uh, program a TV no more. Right. Yeah. Now it's 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 a little complicated. I remember when I used to be able to do stuff without the instructions. That's when you know you're. <laughs> That's when you know you're slipping because when you're young, you can set shit up without the instructions. Now, when you're getting old and if you start looking for that fucking instruction booklet, that's when you know you're slipping, bro. Hey, they, they say hit alt tab. Um, let me see. Let me see, man. Alt. Alt tab. Uh, well, it's just showing me my different screens. And the problem is that when I that title yeah. text screen is supposed to have another box, and that box is just gray. Like there's no button in that box for me to press. It's just a black screen. So I believe that the program is fucking crashed. I honestly believe that. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to literally exit and come right back on. You guys stay right fucking here. All right, I don't man. wanna fucking come back and, and have fucking 19 people in the goddamn chat room. All right, so I'll be right back in a second, man. Fuck. Shit, man. Embarrassing me in these for these white people, man. Shit. Damn. All right, man. Alt, alt control delete, man. Fuck. Let's fuck this shit, man. Everybody hit that like button if you can, man. I'll be back, man. Shit. Next.